Your character is such a straight arrow compared to uh, Florentino, such a romantic. Can you just kind of like talk about that a bit? I don't know if he's uh, so much of a straight arrow. I think that his approach to romantic love is a bit more practical than, than someone who operates from a place of passion. Um, he has a, a certain degree of passion within him, certainly. I mean, he's passionate about music. He, he has a passion for his city and the betterment of his people. Um, but he is a doctor, and he is relatively buttoned down and fastidious. Um, but yeah, you're right. On some level, there is a real practical approach that he takes to uh, the nature of love and, and creating and sustaining it. Were you familiar with the story prior to uh, getting involved with the film? What's sort of commonplace about the story is it, it has a familiar structure when mm -hmm. it comes to other Hollywood love stories, which is uh, boy meets girl, boy gets girl, um, and boy eventually, um, I'm sorry, boy meets girl, <laughs> <laughs> boy loses girl, right. boy gets girl in, in the end. But what makes it unique, what makes it different is there's a 50 year interim between the two last uh, phases. Um, and that seems relatively absurd, um, but within the world of, of Marquez and the world that the film tries to capture, it seems completely um, understandable and, and maybe even normal. Were you familiar with the novel prior to um, becoming attached to the film? I read the novel when I was, yes, when I was a teenager, yeah. Did you have any sort of, uh, feel any sort of pressure, like knowing the story and trying to bring it to, bring it to screen? Well, the pressure was, was huge because of, of the fact that the book is known all over the world, mm -hmm. that because of the fact that that was, that is my first American movie, that it is Mike Newell calling me doing Fermina Daza, that he's, that the fact that I was with those partners as Benjamin Brad and Javier Bardem and John Leguizamo, the pressure was, was huge also for the aging and all that. But at the end, you know, when I start shooting, I said, I don't, I mean, the only way of doing that movie is not thinking about all that because other, other way, otherwise I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do that because I'm gonna be scared and I'm gonna be paralyzed. Just let's think about the day by day and let's think about making a good work. So what was it like playing a overprotective father in this film? I was, I was living for it because it was like a, a dry run for me for when my daughter gets to be of that marrying age and what, am, what strategy I'm going to use. I was going to try reverse psychology, but I might go straight to just whisking her away to a convent. That's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> if I could find a convent. <laughs> you could have gone um, a couple of different directions with this, kind of maybe just the straight, but you right. kind of could, took kind of the comic relief. I mean, what, what made you do that? Because I think the novel has a lot of humor. I think this love story, the, the brilliance of this love story, it's that it's, it's got humor, it's, it's literary, it's passionate, and, and, it's, and it's making fun of love. Right. That's, that's what the beautiful intellectual part of this movie is that it's not your typical corny love story. It's like actual what real love is like. It's, up and down, it's confusing, a lot of sex. Were you familiar with the story before this project? I was familiar with the story and the writer, of course, because mm -hmm. he's one of the great literary giants, but not this one. So I read this one for the, for the movie, and it's great because you know what? It just revitalizes your marriage. I had my wife read it, and it was, <laughs> it was great because it really makes you think about love and can you withstand the test of time. Mm -hmm. 